Hey guys and welcome back to our workthrough of the Further Pure Maths 2 textbook for Edexcel. So this is Further Maths and working through Further Pure 2. So we're moving on to chapter 5 here now today and we're looking at the first topic in this chapter. So this is the chapter on matrix algebra. So this is looking at eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, so today we're looking at 2 by 2 matrices but we also can do 3 by 3 matrices. We also in this chapter learn about diagonalizing matrices and the Cayley Hamilton theorem. So quite a nice interesting chapter and we start off with a nice introduction into eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So we're working through with the official Excel textbook so be sure to follow along guys if you want to keep up with this. So let's jump straight into it. So why have I got a picture of Tony Stark? Well if you've never watched Avengers you probably don't have a clue what's going on right now um, but if you've watched Avengers Endgame uh, you might have actually heard Tony start mention about eigenvalues. So it, what he said didn't really make a whole lot of sense. It's just a bit of a cliche sort of maths and science and movies. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd put this meme on. Um, yeah, enjoy that. It's just a, a little introduction to it. But yeah, so it does come up in, you know, cinema and all that. Um, but it's usually very cliche. But anyway, let's have a look. So we've got eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So first off, Eigen is a German word. If you've studied German or you actually speak German, you'll know that it means particular or special. So just so you're aware of that. And eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we we can only work eigenvalues and eigenvectors with square matrices. So a two by two matrix, a three by three matrix, for example, it has to be a two by two, three by three, for example. And as it says here, an eigenvector of a matrix A is a non-zero column vector x which satisfies the equation ax is equal to lambda x where lambda is just a scalar and that value lambda is the eigenvalue of that cor of the matrix that corresponds to the eigenvector so we can also work out invariant points as well the origin is always an invariant point under any linear transformation and for example if the corresponding eigenvalue is one then every point on this line is an invariant point so just just a you know brief little introduction to it there. If x is an eigenvector of the matrix A, then by definition ax is equal to lambda x, which is lambda i x. So i being the identity matrix, and we can rearrange this. Now you don't need to be able to rearrange this as such; it can help. But what we need this is the important bit here. We need to work out the determinant of a minus lambda i, where i is the uh, the identity matrix. So so it's going to be a 2 by 2 identity matrix or a 3 by 3 but working out a 3 by 3 matrix. So let's have a go at doing an example. It's, it's easier to demonstrate with an example. So we're doing 2 by 2 today. So 2 by 2s are a lot nicer and you'll see why in a second. So what we have to work first is the eigenvalues. So you always work out the eigenvalues first. So we have the matrix A here. So remember we need to work out the determinant of A minus lambda I. So first we need to work out a minus lambda i. And with practice, this is something that you'll just pick up very quick. You'll just be able to see it. Um, but to start off with, it's always good practice just to write down a minus lambda i. So because it's a 2 by 2 matrix that we're working with here today, the identity is the 2 by 2 identity. So it's 1, 0, 0, 1. And what this looks like is this. So a is just this matrix here. And we're subtracting lambda lots of the identity matrix. So if you multiply this across, because lambda is just a scalar, we have this matrix here. And if we actually subtract this off, we end up with this matrix now. So 2 minus lambda, 5, minus 1, and minus 4, minus lambda. Now we work out the determinant of this. So remember, because it's a 2 by 2 matrix, you do 2 minus lambda times minus 4 minus lambda, and then we do minus 5 times minus 1, like they've done here. So what you obtain is when you work out the determinant, you obtain a quadratic polynomial. So like we've got here, we've got lambda squared plus 2 lambda minus 3. So they've simplified everything here, and what you'll get is this. Now, this is why a 2 by 2 is a lot easier to work with than a 3 by 3. A 2 by 2, you obtain a quadratic polynomial. 3 by 3, maybe you can spot it, but we're going to get a cubic polynomial. And obviously this becomes a little more difficult to get the factors out. But don't worry about that just yet. We're going to cover that in the next video. So this is just 2 by 2 for now. So we've got the quadratic there. Now we're going to factorise it to obtain the values for lambda. We're looking to obtain these lambda values. So we factorise and we obtain these values. So we factorise it as lambda uh, minus 1, 
lambda plus 3 is equal to 0, so therefore lambda is 1, or it's minus 3. So our eigenvalues of A are 1 and minus 3. Now, now we have eigenvalues, we can now go on to work out the eigenvectors. So, for the now the eigenvectors, well, we have to pick with a corresponding eigenvalue. So, I'll start with 1, for example, here. And what we do is we equate coefficients. So, what we mean by that is, remember this is, if we go all the way back, so if I just show it here, this is ax is equal to lambda x. This is what we're doing now. This is how we obtain the eigenvector. So, we jump ahead. This is your lambda x bit here. ax is equal to lambda x. And what we do is we multiply across. So 2 times x is 2x, 5 times y is 5y. So 2x plus 5y. And then again, if you multiply these two matrices out, we get minus x minus 4y. And this is equal to xy. So these now we can equate. So we get 2x plus 5y is equal to x. So therefore, x is equal to minus 5y. So what you just need to do now is pick a value. So if we let y be equal to 1, for example, then x is equal to minus 5 times 1, giving us minus 5. And we have our first eigenvector. So an eigenvector corresponding to 1 is minus 5, 1. Now, just a note here, guys, you can have infinitely many eigenvectors. So this is demonstrated here where it says here. We can have infinitely many as long as it's a multiple, for example. So, you know, you could have picked um, y is 2, for example, and you've got minus 5 times 2, minus 10. As long as it's a multiple of this, it doesn't matter how big, how small, you can be as creative as you want. Um, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't advise being silly with it, uh, especially if you're doing this on your exam, but it's not technically incorrect to do it. Um, but it's nice to just keep it simple. And it means there's less chance of messing it up. So yeah, we can have infinitely many eigenvectors for the given eigenvalue. So we've obtained one eigenvector. We need to do the same with the other eigenvalue. So that was minus three. And again, we do the same. So we multiply these two matrices. So that's 2x plus 5y again, minus x minus 4y. And this is equal to minus 3x minus 3y. Now we equate the upper elements. So 2x plus 5y is equal to minus 3x. And then solve from here. Now again, guys, just as a point, it doesn't matter if you equate the, the lower elements. It doesn't matter. You'll still obtain the correct um, equation here that y is equal to minus x. So if we let x be equal to 1 then y is equal to minus 1. And we have an eigenvalue corresponding to minus 3. And again, you can pick infinitely many. Any multiple of that will be correct for that eigenvector. So, just be careful. Read the questions carefully. You might be sometimes asked to find what we call a normalized eigenvector. So, if A so is equal to AB, the column vector AB, is an eigenvector of matrix A, then the unit vector A here is this vector. This is the normalized eigenvector. So be very, very careful for that, guys. And they demonstrate it using the same example that we've just done. What you're doing is you're finding the magnitude of A. So here, you've got minus 5 squared plus 1 squared. So notice, if we go back, that this is the eigenvector for the eigenvalue of 1. And this is the eigenvector for the eigenvalue of minus 3. So they're doing that here. So this is for the eigenvalue of 1, this minus 5 and 1, and this is the one for minus 3, 1 and 1, like you can see here, or 1 and minus 1, should I say. So be very, very careful for that, guys. So you've got to be careful. Make sure you read it carefully. If it's a normalized one, you need to find the, the magnitude of A, your eigenvector. We can also have complex eigenvalues. So this is very, you know, the method is just the exact same. So I've demonstrated, uh, well, I have not demonstrated it. Edx I've demonstrated it here in the textbook. So just to illustrate the point and what's going on, you're working out C minus lambda I. So if you've got the matrix C, we're working out the determinant of C minus lambda I. And this is the exact same method as before. You're going to get a quadratic polynomial, lambda squared minus 2 lambda plus 5. So you obtain this quadratic. Now, what I'd recommend is if you have a graphical calculator, once you've obtained your quadratic, straight away put it into the polynomial bit and see what roots you obtain. It might tell you that there is no real roots, in which case you know you're going to have complex roots, right? Or a complex eigenvalue. Now, if you've got complex roots, that means you're going to have to complete the square on it, basically, like they've done here. So what they've done is got the polynomial, and they've completed the square here. That's all that's happened. 
So the method's the exact same. You will just usually need to complete the square, which they've demonstrated above. They've obtained the lambda is equal to 1, plus or minus 2i. And the eigenvectors is just the exact same method as before. So here is just some key points that we can take away from today. So it's just telling you that the eigenvector of a matrix A is the non-zero non column vector x, which satisfies Ax is equal to lambda x. So that's how you obtain your eigenvectors. And it's just saying that lambda is the eigenvalue that correspond, corresponds to the eigenvector x. Um, telling you about invariant lines under the transformation. Now, we've not really covered that today, um, but we will cover it at some point um, in this chapter, so don't worry about that too much. Um, point three is just saying that we have to work out the determinant of a minus lambda i. The, oh, this is what I should have also mentioned. This is the characteristic equation. Now, this is very important for when we get to the Cayley Hamilton theorem. So, this is your character, characteristic equation. So, just remember that it's very important for the Cayley Hamilton theorem. And then for the last point, it's just going on about the normalized eigenvector. So, be very careful for that. Read the question fully. If it wants a normalized one, make sure you divide it by the magnitude of your eigenvector, like so. And there we have it, guys. So that's a brief introduction today to 2x2 two two matrices and um, working out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for them 2x2 two two matrices. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at 3x3 three three, and then we're going to do a series of mixed on 2x2 um, two two and 3x3 three three matrices and exam questions corresponding to them. So I hope that's okay, guys. Be sure to subscribe and leave a comment below.